Hey y'all, this is Jamie with Out of Bounds with Jamie and Abby, presented by Ashley. And on today's episode, we had the wonderful, talented, intelligent Dr. Ugh. Amaka, who is Jamie's plastic surgeon, but um, she works here in Nashville at Maxwell Aesthetics, mm -hmm. and um, she was incredible. Oh, I mean, I just, I fell in love with her the day I met her, and just having her answer all of our questions with that big smile, I mean, I it was amazing. If you've ever had any questions about uh, any female restoration, yes. you will get them answered today. So we hope you guys enjoy. First things first, Dr. Amato, how do you pronounce your full name? So, so as you know, everybody calls me Dr. Amaka. Um, my full name is Neamaka. Okay. And last name is Wuba. The N is semi-silent. Okay. Wuba, but yeah. Okay. But I just shortened it up to Amaka. First off, you were my plastic surgeon. Yeah. And I am so excited that we can sit here today with you and discuss not only like your career, but how you got there. You're my girl from New Orleans, mm -hmm. um, LSU girl, mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> through and through. That's why we absolutely love each other. Yeah, tell us. So you're from? I'm New from New Orleans, Orleans okay. right. So born and raised in New Orleans. My parents are from Nigeria, hence the name. Mm -hmm. And then I went to LSU for college. Then I, from there, went to Vanderbilt for medical school. Then went to University of Kentucky for my residency in plastic surgery, which was six years. Then I did a one-year fellowship in aesthetics, or just pure cosmetics, just kind of focusing on everything, breast, body, face, vaginal area, too. <laughs> <laughs> I was um, actually looking on TikTok at that. I'm like, oh, I wonder if we're going to talk about that today. <laughs> hey, you know, like, like I said, you know, we can talk about anything. <laughs> <laughs> and so I did that. Then it came back to Nashville, so I feel, really feel like I went full circle. So um, mm. we've loved it here. It's been great, so... That's amazing. And you have two children. I do. What are their ages? So um, my little boy is six and my little girl is four. They're oh. super cute. <laughs> so it's my cute. favorite in the mornings whenever you wake up uh -huh. and like get your collagen ready uh -huh. and they try to steal it from you. And yeah. it's so cute to watch. Uh, After yeah. this, our followers will get to know your TikTok and your Instagram because it's. I know. And, you know, I just either go live or I go stories and I don't censor anything. So last night my baby girl had made poo poo and needed me to clean her butt <laughs> in the middle of a video. And I was like, hold on, y'all. I'll be back. Yeah. So, you know, so no, it, it's been fun. It's been super fun. I love but it. it's yeah. so informative, too. I mean, mm -hmm. I did a deep dive kind of in preparation for today and I learned so much about plastic surgery, you mm -hmm. know, and I think what's cool is it's like what every woman thinks about, you know, especially when you have children and, you know, your your tummy's going to get stretched out, your boobs are going to sag, you're, you know, people think about it and they don't always look into it. So you just mm -hmm. have informed of things that make it easy. Yeah. And I think that's mm -hmm. why it's so like digestible, mm -hmm. you know? So. And I really started mm -hmm. that because, well, when I first started social media, I, I wanted to, I was like, what is no one else doing in this space? When I started maybe three and a half, four years ago and no one was really, I didn't see a lot of people educating mm -hmm. necessarily about things. So I was like, I'm just going to do that because that's simple. It's straightforward. Like I don't have to stress out about what I'm going to say. <laughs> you know, I can educate on all these things I've learned. Also, I found that, and I get a lot of things from my patients. I found a lot of women come in with the, either they didn't know there was things they could do or they just come in with heavy guilt yeah. about like I'm exercising and this won't go away. Like, so I just do a lot of my content is based on that. Just trying to let you know, like, hey, like you can't exercise skin away and yeah. that's OK. And let me tell you about this lady who had a mommy restoration because we're not calling it makeover because that's not what it is. No, you know? yeah. it's not our fault that our yeah. bodies do this, exactly. you know, and that's why for me, I'm a complete open book about everything. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it. It is what it is, exactly. you know? But talk about this, like, kind of the stigma around calling it, like, a mommy makeover. Because that mm -hmm. still is commonplace mm -hmm. all the time. And mm -hmm. it, it does feel a little bit like, why are we calling it that? Right. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. And I realized, and I, I've thought a lot about, like, how can we make this less stigmatizing? Um, make plastic surgery less of a, a thing like, oh, my gosh, like, you're having, like, you're doing this thing. And it's like, it's really okay. And so... A big thing I did was think about like the term makeover and what that feels like. And, you know, when I think about a makeover, it's like you're giving someone what they have never had. Right. Right. And, and so um, in some senses, like maybe that happens, maybe. But really, the goal is to restore. So like the term mommy restoration literally just I mean, literally, I was one day writing a script and it just came to me. It just came. And I was like, OK, I'm just going to start to start that. Yeah. Um, and no one else is really saying it or doing it. And I was like, I'm just going to do it and see what happens. And 
a lot of women reached out to me and were like, oh my gosh, like, thank you for saying that. Like the reason I, you know, I have patients who come to me because they're like, because you call it a restoration like this, it feels like I'm just, I just want to get back to where I was, you know, like changes that happen with pregnancy Mm -hmm. or or age and things like that. I just want to get back to where I was before these things happened. Um, so I think just seeing it more like that and treating it more like that has has helped a lot of women. Yeah, I agree. I know with my journey, I it was ten years ago. It was we were living in Boston, so you didn't, you weren't my doctor yet. <laughs> but I, after having Bailey, well, with both of my kids, I gained sixty and fifty pounds, and one was because I was eating McDonald's all the time, and the other one we just don't know why. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Um, it really my stomach. I mean, it, it, there was nothing I could do about it. I mean, it was a couple of years to where I finally was, John, what do you think if I go see about this? Mm-hmm. And sure enough, I went and my abs were separated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so the doctor, I had never heard about this before. Mm-hmm. And he was like, Jamie, I want you to do half of a sit up. And I'm like, okay. And he stuck my fingers Mm -hmm. through my abs right here. And I did it. And I swear, my hand went through. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, Mm -hmm. you know, and he explained it to me. And I was like, so there was nothing I was doing wrong. I mean, Mm -hmm. I was eating. I was exercising. I was almost exercising too much Mm because I was so worried about it. Mm -hmm. One big question I want to ask you, though, is with the mommy restoration. So, again, I went from being a small person gaining all this weight through pregnancy of course my breasts just Mm -hmm. I mean I can't even explain how big they got and then after pregnancy it just they shrunk so small and it was nothing but skin but and I went to the doctor and I was like listen I just want to be back to where I was Mm -hmm. and he told me he was like with your shoulders you don't need to be that small. You need to be bigger. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget when I went in for my consultation with you, you looked at me like he did what? Mm -hmm. And, and so I came Mm -hmm. out of surgery Mm -hmm. just Mm -hmm. like, Oh my gosh, I look like I'm on Playboy. Mm -hmm. And that was not the intention. Right. So I suffered with that for a long time Mm -hmm. until I met you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I meet women um, who have had similar experiences Mm -hmm. Where it's like they, and it's it's always about listening. Like what, and I always say this, I'm like, because p- patients will come and say, do I need this? I'm like, well, tell me about your goals. Like what, what are your goals? Because it's not our job to tell you what you need to have based on what we think is an ideal whatever, yeah. right? Um, but I do meet women sometimes who come in and they're like, well, I was told that I have to be a double D. Yeah. Mm. Or they, you know, or they went in saying like, I wanted this and they came up with something completely different. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, oh my gosh. You trust your body to someone, right? And right. plastic surgery, like no matter how way, what way you look at it, like it's it's it it's a transformative thing, right? So you wake up and something has changed, like things have changed. There's a little bit of identity that goes with that. Mm-hmm. Um, so coming out like that, like I, I'm often shocked and horrified by some stories I hear, in, including yours. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know? I was so upset for so long. But mm-hmm. could that be the male versus female doctor thing I've too? I've always wondered that because men, you know, if you're a man that likes big boobs then they're going to be like go bigger you yeah. know it's like it yeah. becomes personal at that point but like coming from a female perspective like you it's like hey big boobs kind of suck like yeah, a lot right. like <laughs> they're uncomfortable you can't exercise as well whatever you know so I think I, I love that you're in the field and like I have to assume that there aren't a ton of female plastic surgeons right they're not um you know in Nashville you can count on, on, on one hand the amount of female plastic mm-hmm. surgeons there are in my training program there were three you know three of us and so females in the field are very rare which is interesting because the patients in the field are mostly female yeah, yeah. why um, is that do you think surgery scares pe- a lot of people in general men and women right but it scares women more because you know you were told that you know maybe you can't have a family or you're gonna have long hours like you know you're more more so you're deterred as women from doing any surgical field so to be a plastic surgeon like it's been training is pretty intense mm-hmm. the lifestyle is sort of what you make it but the training can be pretty intense and so I think women in general have been deterred from surgery in general for a mm. long time and that's changing so the female ratios are getting better but it's still f- kind of lags far behind did you always know that's what you wanted to go into or did you kind of waver I sort of wavered so I thought initially I went into I, I went into it thinking I was going to be a pediatric oncologist like when, oh, I, when wow. I started medical school why is um, that but I had a, I had a brother growing up he was 18 and he died of, he died of a brain tumor oh, oh wow yeah I'm and sorry. so um we were five now we're four siblings and so we mm-hmm. all pretty much went into medicine and we all thought you know we all kind of felt that we were going to do something oncology related but then we 
it, it's interesting. We all went into it and realized like, oh, we can't. It was almost like, you know how something happens and it's like too many memories that, and it's almost it's almost like you can't handle it emotionally. It's too close. It was too close, and so we actually. So I have a twin sister who's a urologist and a brother who's an orthopedic surgeon. Wow. So we all went into surgery, and when I think about why, I think it's because we were in a situation with our brother where you know it c- it couldn't be fixed, right? Because he ended mm. up passing away, which medicine can't fix everything. But in a way, like we did surgery because we get you know that immediate gratification we can fix things yeah Yeah. so i think that i think that (laughs) might be why we all went into surgery but that's incredible you can all call Uh each other and rely on each other no it's so cool especially in going through residency was obviously very hard and having a twin sister i could Mm. call and complain to and she had the same (laughs) exact complaint yeah you know you just had someone you could vent to all the time and y'all are identical too right Mm y'all too Mm y'all look that's amazing yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) what a smart family gosh (laughs) (laughs) how old were you whenever you finished everything how old were you because you're and how long have you been with Maxwell right so I've been October 6th will make three years okay um and I have been you know I was 32 okay 32 when I finished all my training um so it was you know I often calculate it but I often forget what the calculation (laughs) is but it's like you know there was six years of residency then a year of fellowship four years of medical school plus an additional year so about probably about 16 years um in terms of like the training period. So, I mean, it's, and that's yeah. why women are deterred because in their mind, they're like, when am I going to have kids? Yeah. <laughs> right, you know? um, right. Because a lot of times I think we think we have to finish everything. It has to be this perfect time when we, mm-hmm. I'm going to finish training and then I'm going to do a year of practice. It's like, you just have to let life happen. Right. right? Um, but that's why, because truly like the, a lot of the training happens during your childbearing years, a yeah. lot of it, you know, so. What point in that 16 years did you meet your husband? So I met my husband when I started medical school. Okay. Yeah. So we we met then, and we actually did long distance. So I traveled with my family. We traveled to Nigeria, and he lived in Nigeria at the time. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, and I was met him, and I was like, really? There's like no one else in America? <laughs> 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 that has to be the most complicated thing. I mean, thing. really? <laughs> you know, so, so we did long distance, and then he moved here, and then we, we you know, we kind of stayed together and ended up getting married. We got married my after my third year of medical school. So between my third mm-hmm. and fourth years of medical school. Wow. So my daughter is a junior in high school mm-hmm. and she is right now in the process of what do I do? You know, as far as career wise, she has a lot of medical stuff. So she's always said she wanted to, to do medical. Just recently, she's, well, I don't know. That's a long time. Mm-hmm. Did you ever go through that? Like question yourself, when you were younger because I've always wondered if she's just discouraged because of the length mm-hmm. I think the the length can be discouraging and that's why like when you're when you decide to go to medical school when you're in medical school you're like gosh surgery tr- surgery r- training is you know six to nine, eight years versus something wow. else that might be three years yeah um and I think I struggle I struggle with that a little bit initially and at the end of the day I, what I always feel like is you have to just follow your passion yeah mm-hmm. because if you were you do less time, you know, let's say you just do something else, but you're not passionate about it. Well, are you going to wake up every day happy to do what you do? Feeling privileged to do what you yeah. do, um, even though it's a little bit longer. It's definitely like no matter what you want to do in life, if you have to just find what you're passionate about, what your heart's into. Mm-hmm. And no ma- it doesn't matter how long it takes. Right. Yeah. Because in the grand scheme of it, like when you're living life and you're done, like we're all just living life. Right. Yeah. And, and you're done. It's your day to day that's going to matter. Right. You, you're going to spend the majority of your life you know, doing at work. At work. Yeah. 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 You know? This might be a very dumb question, but do you get paid during <laughs> training? Like do, a, any part that of that? Is a good, that is question. A good question. I don't know that either. Um, you get paid years. very horribly. Yeah. Because okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'm like, that how does one question. sustain 16 right. years of education? Yeah. <laughs> like so that's... medical school, you know, you, you, you don't get yeah. paid obviously. And then residency you get paid, but it is like, you know, for my, as many hours as you work and stuff. And, and when you break it down to the dollar, yeah. like, you know, every, <laughs> Everybody's like, well, I calculated according to hours and, you know, it's like two dollars. It's just like, <laughs> <laughs> it's embarrassing, yeah. basically. It's, it's enough to like survive. Like yeah. you can survive, but, you know, survival. They should just let you like live at the hospital <laughs> at that point I mean, so you, you don't know. pay rent. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't really go through this. So let me tell everybody how I met you. For a while, I had not been feeling good and yes. tried everything I could to, I mean, I was having body aches. I was losing my hair. I was diagnosed with a form of arthritis. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And it was a friend of mine 
from Boston who sent me a sheet that was about breast implant illness. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, huh? And she was like, Jamie, you check all the boxes. And so did she. I mean, even the ear ringing. I still have ear ringing. Mm. And I'm like, man, what if, what if this is it? And again, I was at a point to, in my life from the time that I had my implants in, I had gained 25, 30 pounds. I mean, just because of life, mm-hmm. which means my boobs got so much bigger. Mm-hmm. So I was already thinking, okay, I need to do something, reduce my boobs. I, I mean, I've, I've just got to do something. Um, and then whenever she brought it to my attention, that's whenever I found out through you, through another patient. Cause mm-hmm. that's, I honestly did not realize you had just started that October. Yeah. So when uh-huh. I, I came to you in Wait, I came to you right after that for my consultation. Right, you were you were early on. With, yeah, yeah uh-huh. I just realized that. Mm-hmm. Um, and my surgery was in February, so I made the decision. Let's just go ahead and get these suckers out. I just I don't want them anyway. Mm-hmm. And um, I'll be honest, I feel so much better. Mm-hmm. I feel so incredible. My blood work was completely different. I did blood work before and blood work after. Mm-hmm. I want to know your thoughts on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. and I was very like, do I ask her? Do I not ask her? Because you, part of your job is putting implants in. Yes. But mm-hmm. do you see this in patients or, I mean. Like how common is it? Yeah. yeah. Right. And it's a it's an important topic. So. You know, as you said, I put breast implants in um, Mm -hmm. for augmentation, for reconstruction. I do a lot of reconstruction, too. Um, And so breast implant illness is really kind of came about fairly recently. Mm -hmm. And and it truly is like there there are a subset of women who with breast implants develop symptoms. Um, and we're, what we're trying to figure out is like, what exactly is the, the reason, right? What is right. the susceptibility? So you mentioned like there's some autoimmune in your family. Yes. So we know there's some women who are more susceptible to having it. Yes. Um, and so there can be like things, right? Like things that in some people, they tolerate it fine. Yes. They do fine. They don't have issues. And other people, they just, it's, they just don't tolerate it right. well. They don't tolerate it fine. It's like my know? fake eyelashes. I can't do them. My eyes can't do them. Yeah, I so get rashes. Sister, like, like I've gotten fake eyelashes and uh-huh. my, my eyelashes fell out. So I just yeah. don't do them anymore, you know, but some people do well. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I've had mine three years. I'm doing fine. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, um, and so it's, uh, it's one of those things, you know, th- thank goodness for like the scientific community where we're like studying it a lot because we also are curious, like, hmm, what exactly is going on? Yeah. And there's been different studies done. So and we talked too when we met about the treatment, right? So yes. I was like, okay, we'll remove the implants. I was like, I'll get as much capsule as I can. If yes. there's capsule stuck to your rib, like that's dangerous. Yes. Because you can, if you get into the rib space, then you can have air in the lungs and that's, you know, can be mm-hmm. dangerous. So there's different studies and things that the plastic surgery community is doing just to kind of understand it more. Gotcha. But there are a subset of women. And I, I do see women in my practice, not necessarily patients that I implant, but mm-hmm. patients who come from elsewhere who yeah. have implants and I'll take implants out and and some will get better and some, some don't, don't get better. Yeah. Right. But the, a lot of them do get better. And so we know there's that it's, tr- it's true. There's a it subset of women who for whatever reason that we're still trying to figure out yeah. are more likely to have kind of this intolerance of breast implants. Yeah. I, I'm so happy to talk to you about it because mm-hmm. it really, I mean, even if it was subconscious in my mind that now that they're out, I feel better. I didn't care. Cause that's how, that's how crazy It was for me. Mm -hmm. That's how much Mm -hmm. more I felt better. But I do remember. So whenever um, you took mine out, I had one stuck. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And because you were like, you're going to be bruised Mm -hmm. because it was stuck pretty bad. Yeah. You were very bruised. Yeah, I was. Yeah, and I remember so. You know, Lisa came to see you the uh-huh. next day, and she said, yeah. "She's like, oh my gosh." I'm like, "It's fine, it's fine. Yeah. She'll be, she's gonna be fine." I was like, "She's gonna be fine." <laughs> <laughs> but do you think that that could be part of it? That my body it was stuck, and my body didn't like it. I've always wondered that. Hard to know. That's hard to know because, like, I like I have, you know, I take call for hospitals, some of the hospitals mm-hmm. in the city, and so like. Like I've had a couple of situations where I've gotten called in people who've had implants for, you know, 50, 60 years and, and they're in the hospital. Right. And, and so I'll make, I make, I'll go and like do, I'll do surgery on them later. 
and sometimes they're stuck. Yeah. You know, but they don't necessarily have symptoms. Gotcha. Mm. So I, I don't know. You know, God, I, yeah. I don't know if it's related, but it could right. be, but I'm just not sure. Right. 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 That's the hard that's thing. Is that's the hard thing. And sometimes in medicine is like, yeah, we like answers, but sometimes it's just. It's unknown. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean. Okay. So what are your top four surgeries you do? Top four surgeries. Okay. Like m- mommy restorations is like, you know, yeah. the most common thing. <laughs> I do a lot of tummy tucks. Okay. Those are the top. Vaginal rejuvenation. I do a lot. You do. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do. Wait, can we, can you explain <laughs> to us what that is? Yeah. So it's, it's a, it's a spectrum, right? So okay. vaginal rejuvenation is all about, I call them our lady parts. Cause everybody knows what that means. When you say mm-hmm. lady parts, like, you know, what you know what mm-hmm. And you, if you got children around, you know, you have mm-hmm. to be saying that. It's your tootie. Word. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> Um, it's, it's all about rejuvenating it from the inside out. So I think about it like fertilizer, right? So we always talk about like facial aging, uh-huh. like, you know, our breasts start hanging, our skin on our face hangs. We do microneedling. The same things happen down there too in our lady parts. Uh-huh. Um, we just don't see it as often or we don't talk about it as often. Yeah. So it's like, you know, hush, hush kind of thing or everybody's not like posting about it on social media right, <laughs> you know, like right. everything else. And so it's all about just rejuvenating it from the inside out. So addressing loose skin, addressing the appearance, addressing hanging skin of the inner or outer lips that bothers a lot of women, gotcha. but they're just, you know, kind of nervous to talk about enhancing things so that you can have a better sexual experience, mm-hmm. you know? And so that's, it's kind of all about that. And there are different things we do non-surgically with lasers, but also surgically to help with that. Oh, Has wow. that become more common, you think, in the past, like, five years, would you say? Or what do you... I think it's become more common. Like, a lo- the technology's gotten a lot better. Yeah. Um, I also think we're just... think we're talking about it more. Um, but definitely become more common. Because I also, I think it's just... You may be dealing with something and not realize there's things you can do. And suddenly, oh, gosh, I saw this on the internet. Or mm-hmm. I saw this on Instagram. There is something I can do. So I'm just going to go see someone about it. Totally. So it's definitely becoming more common for sure. Yeah, I've just heard about it more lately mm-hmm. than ever before. So... Mm-hmm. Okay, so... Tummy tuck. Okay. Vaginal uh, rejuvenation. Is that I do what we that say? all the time. Sorry. I'm so sorry. No. No, I love it. <laughs> we got a like deep number. dive. Okay, we did deep we did mommy restoration, <laughs> tummy tucks, vaginal rejuvenation. Number four, you know, I do a lot of like lipo. I do I, I love doing like facelifts and, and rhinoplasties too. Really? So yeah. you do that as well? I do. <gasps> you did my mom's and I got I, I got permission I to say this. Yes. You did my mom's eyelids. Yeah. Oh, they look so good. I know. She did it well. She did so <laughs> oh, good. She, y'all, she stayed awake for it. She stayed awake <laughs> for did. it. Do you have she to? She talked to you during you the thing, You don't have right? to. <laughs> Why would you do that? So she can save the money. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. She was like, I'm, I'm, I told everyone I'm saving this much, you know? And I'm like, but she was, I mean, she was Jamie, amazing. couldn't you have paid to put your mom down? <laughs> she didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> oh but upper okay. eyelids are definitely something you can do awake, you know? So, wow. Yeah. Okay. So you do it all. I do it all pretty much. And I, I do it all. And so I do, I, I, I talk a lot about the body stuff because I do that the most, but I do like, I, I definitely do rhinoplasty. I do facelifts. And so I remember I posted one and someone was like, Oh, you do face too. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. And when I took that additional year after my residency training, it was just to, you know, I was like, I just want to be really good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to have like this curve where I'm like, you know, kind of learning. I'm like, I just want to come out and be like as good as possible in like everything. Right. Mm-hmm. And you have your patients come from all over the country. They do. How mm-hmm. did they find out about you? A lot. So social media a lot. Okay. So, so it started off with Instagram because I started on Instagram and then mm-hmm. TikTok I started probably about a year ago. Okay. So I, I get a lot from TikTok and Instagram. Social That's media insane. is like, the, it's, it's really crazy. That's and amazing. is that how you started with Lisa? So Lisa is her nurse. Like, so that way I didn't have to go into the office the next day. Lisa came in and checked on me. Mm. And it was amazing. Mm-hmm. At home? At home. Oh, that's cool. I don't have to go anywhere. Because I always like to see people the day after. Mm-hmm. And I used to have them come in. And I'm like, this is torture. Like, yeah. you know, like, yeah, they want to lay in bed. Stuff. I know. And you're like, come to the office, <laughs> sit in a stiff chair, and I'll be in to see you, you know, mm-hmm. hopefully running on time that day. Yes. And so, like, me and Lisa got together and I was like, Lisa, please help. So then at one point, I was doing the home business and I was like, well, this is not sustainable. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, so. So I met, so me and Lisa actually had known each other a while. So now that's pretty much, she exclusively does that with me. She's amazing. That's Mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. I love her. So with the tummy tuck, let's go further. So my sister had twins and she Mm -hmm. gave me permission to talk about this. And so she just has a lot of loose skin. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, what would you ask a plastic surgeon? I'm interviewing (laughs) one. And she had a lot of really good questions because she's really thought through it. And a couple were like recovery time. How soon after having babies do you have to be completely done with babies? Right. You know, mm-hmm. all of that stuff mm-hmm. that's like kind of the nitty gritty that right. people want to know. Mm-hmm. 
those are all good. So pretty much you want to wait about six months to a year after having babies. Um, sometimes I've been asked, like, can you, can, I'm having a C-section. Can I have a tummy tuck at the same time? I'm like, absolutely not. Do <laughs> not do it. Sounds great, but it's a bad <laughs> idea. <laughs> you no. know, um, cause uterus is swollen. Like, yeah. You know, and so generally six months to a year after um, having babies is a good time for a tummy tuck. You know, as far as being completely done, I generally would say, like, if you, like, if you can wait, I would just wait till you're completely done. That way you're just, like, done. Your results are set. You know, obviously, barring any weight fluctuations. But if you accidentally get pregnant, it's not like a it's huge, not. huge deal. It's right. just going to kind of ruin some of the work. It can change some of the work. Some okay. people bounce back. Like, some people bounce back and, like, they're fine. But some people might need a little skin, like, a little skin removal if some of the skin stretches but doesn't quite bounce back. Okay. What about your abs? Like, what's mine? Being separated and they had to put them back together. Mm-hmm. If they separate again, I, I just imagine that hurting so bad. Not not particularly. No? Um, n- not really. They can separate again. It's other things, so you may need to have muscle repair again. If I, I do have some young patients who are like, I just have to dress the skin. Maybe they've lost a lot of weight. And I know I'm going to have children, but I need to dress the skin. I just don't do a muscle repair. Mm. Oh, okay. gotcha. If I know that they're thinking about it and we're doing a tummy tuck, yeah. I, I tell them, like, we're just not going to do a muscle repair. Because weight loss is the other reason that I do see some muscle separation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. And then recovery time is? So recovery time varies. So I generally ha- let everybody know, especially with little ones, you know, for two weeks, you are the dependent. Yes. So like no one can depend on you. So there's no like household stuff. You're not making anyone meals like you Mm. need the meals made for you. Essentially, it's kind of like right after you have a baby. Mm hmm. Except if you don't have a newborn, you can take narcotics and not worry about yeah. it. So it's like, so it's, <laughs> it's, it's better. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of what I, I tell people. So two weeks, like you, it's kind of like your downtime. The first week is like you're completely dependent. You need help with everything, getting to the shower, meals, using the toilet. Second week, you kind of start regaining your independence. So you can like get to the, get to the kitchen and like make a sandwich if you needed to. Generally, people are back to work, you know, if they, if you work from home after two weeks, Okay. Um, and then three weeks is kind of like, you know, a big part of the recovery is done. Mm-hmm. But swelling is kind of prolonged. Yeah. I think it was it was over a year until I actually noticed mm-hmm. that my swelling was down after. Yeah. So it can take that long. Yeah. yeah. It was. Um, so I you didn't did tell me and boob. I did. Okay. All at once. Same yeah. time. Okay. And y'all, it was so funny. So I actually also had a hernia. Mm. <laughs> So my mom told my dad, hey, I'm going to fly up to Boston. Jamie's having this hernia surgery. And I think she's going to help, like, do something with her stomach, too. And she, so she was gone for a while. And then imagine the next time my dad sees me and I have boobs out the <laughs> year. Um, oh, okay. You know what Did I mean? Anything? He never said anything, but yeah. I know, I know he <laughs> noticed. <laughs> I know he noticed. That's it hilarious. was you know. I mean, I went from an A pre-pregnancy to literally like i don't know an f or whatever because <gasps> i gained so much weight wow mm. would you ever do it <laughs> would you i don't need well to i do it. well that's the, my other question actually i because i don't nursed, have to answer that either, i nursed two babies so i i'm fine with my size but like they're just saggy because mm-hmm. it's like kids just suck the life out of them i mm-hmm. feel like i don't know what happens but can you do a lift with no pl- implant you can you can so Is it's that- all yeah you can so, so oftentimes the question is like do i need an implant i'm like well let me talk to me about what your goals are right so if your goal is to basically have a lifted breast higher on your chest wall not necessarily have like upper pole fullness so upper pole is like if you if you like look in the mirror and you look at your breast where your breasts start from your chest is like your upper breast Mm -hmm. right your upper breast so without an implant you will you'll you won't have breast tissue above that Right. So they, they will naturally hang, but they'll be a little bit lifted on your chest wall. So a lift works great. But, you know, if you're looking for like perkiness and fullness, like when I hear perky, I'm like, ding, ding, sounds like implant. Mm-hmm. You know, when they're like, mm-hmm. I want to be perky. I'm like, hmm, let's talk about that. You mm-hmm. know, and so or like you can go braless with either. So you can go braless. That's a big one. That's so a big. Yeah. Plus. <laughs> yeah. You can go braless with a lift <laughs> or with a, with, with a lift with it. You can you don't need an implant to go braless. So what about the fat grafting? So the one thing Mm -hmm. she did with me was because I didn't want to go back to an A because I knew that's what potentially a a B, C, I don't Mm -hmm. know what you would think. Mm -hmm. Um, But I asked her, I was like, can you take some fat from somewhere else and stick it in there? Mm -hmm. And she did it. Mm -hmm. And she lifted and she lifted them. Sounds like a dream. It is a dream. <laughs> <laughs> it was my dream. <laughs> and she made it happen. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, but we should talk about the other side too, which is working with cancer patients or BRCA gene, yes, correct? Yes. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. what does that look like? What percentage of patients that you're doing breast? All uh, right. You know what? That, that's definitely in the top procedures because yeah. I do that a lot. I do that... Um, 
about once a week in general. Wow. Um, so I see patients who have a genetic susceptibility to breast cancer, so having the BRCA gene or their other genes too, um, or women who have breast cancer. And the thought there is, what happens there is basically breast tissues removed through a mastectomy, and then pretty much what you have is skin. You, you know, the breast tissue's gone. There's not any, you're completely flat. There's nothing there. Or you can be even caved in. Um, so the idea is to reconstruct that with, you know, we do implant-based, which is the most common overall, um, and then there's your own tissue base, which is basically using like abdominal tissue or back tissue to reconstruct, basically reconstruct mm. the breast. That one's a, quite a journey. Um, a lot of times what I realize is that it's, what I've realized is that it's a very traumatic event, you know, because it's, it's a, it's a loss that you didn't have a choice. It's just, yeah. it's happening to you. Like I didn't, you know, no one chooses to have their breast taken off. Um, and I think there's sometimes the underappreciation or underestimation of how, what a big part of being a woman that is like, mm -hmm. you know, you use it to hold up your wedding dress or you nurse yeah. babies in your breast and, and they're gone. Right. Yeah. Um, so the goal is just, that's true. That's true. That's truly restoration. Right. The goal is there to just kind of restore what's taken away. And the best feeling is when women come back in and they're like happy. And I'm thinking to myself like, wow, you're happy. Like mm -hmm. this isn't, this isn't your breast, but you're happy. Like that's great. Yeah, you know? that must feel good for mm -hmm. you to help mm -hmm. them like that, you mm -hmm. know? And so yeah. for the, because do you remove, do you always have to remove the nipple or no? Not always. Okay. So there's nipple sparing and there's different things. So <clears throat> nipple sparing, you know, if you can keep the nipple or not, kind of depends on the tumor location. So if the okay. tumor is really close to the nipple, you typically can't keep it. I usually defer to their oncologist or the cancer doc, their cancer surgeon for that, who I work with closely during the surgeries. Or if the nipple is like really low, um, in those cases, usually you can't keep it. Sometimes, depending on the situation, I can do a lift, you know, and then come back and do the mastectomy so we can keep it. So there's nipple preservation mm -hmm. things we can do if they're candidate for that. Okay. And then it's sometimes the nipple's taken off with that. And the idea, my idea is usually to try and make it the most aesthetic possible. So I always, I always try and combine aesthetic and cosmetic and re reconstructive principles mm -hmm. or cosmetic and reconstructive. I don't really see them as different because I think everybody's goal is always to have the best cosmetic result. Yeah. And so I try and just make those incisions or scars. So when women look in the mirror, they don't feel traumatized right, you know right. or they don't see that reminder every single time mm -hmm. is there a such thing as an artificial nipple there is there is <laughs> there and they tattoo them i was a little nervous right? there is yeah and they tattoo, <laughs> and they tattoo them on them which well. those seem like i've seen you know just the doctor <laughs> shows i watched those yeah they're 3d incredible. tattoos and i mean they look like nipples they oh, legitimately wow. look like i mean i've walked in and been like and i'm like i'm like look and i'm like i'm I'm pretty sure we did a nipple. Yeah. <laughs> but like, there's a nipple. You know? So I'm just sitting there like, um, did I miss, did I like miss something? I'm like, I know she had. She's reviewing the chart. I know. She's I'm like, like, where'd you get those? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and there's also the ones that you can like get from the store and put on uh -huh. or like Amazon or, you know, any shop. Oh, um, and then there's ones that really? temp there's temporary tattoos. So like patients can put on at home themselves and they last maybe three, five days. No way! Wow. All, it's so much, so many, so much like amazing things. You know, I'm going to Amazon just to look and see what <laughs> they look like. <laughs> oh my gosh, you are. <laughs> Send me the link. <laughs> um, so with the BRCA gene, I'm so, and you said there are other genes too. I'm so curious, like, is that recommended? Like, if you know you have the BRCA gene, like, is that hard for you, or has it come so far in like the medical community that you're like, yeah, this is preventative. You should do it. So it's it's all about like a, assessing risk, right? So you look at age, you look at like okay, how many you know like periods, like age of menstruation. So you, we look at all those things in terms in terms of determining how much exposure that this person has had to the hormone estrogen, um, which can you know increase the risk and things like that. Um, so it like it sometimes it's age dependent. So like what, but the thing that really I think a lot of patients worry about is because they have to do if if you don't have it, you have to do monitoring every so often. Okay. Or if you feel something, it's like okay, like is that do we have to get monitoring too? Right. Um, so it, it's so risk reducing that oftentimes the breast surgeons do recommend it. Okay. Mm hmm And um and I've had some very young patients like twenty years old, you know, really? who, who have it and have it done because they're like, I just don't want to think about this. Oh, I'm I would. Just, you know, I would have it done mm -hmm. in a heartbeat. You know, sometimes we call that surgery like, oh, this patient had an elective mastectomy, and I'm like, I don't, you know, it's no one elects for that. No. Right. So right. I think it's it's more so thinking about how we phrase things like you kind of didn't have a choice, like because mm -hmm. your your breasts, you know, eventually were very likely going to 
try and kill you. Mm. Yeah. Right? yeah. Right. So. Is there ever a, a time that insurance kicks into those things or is that all sort of, I mean, obviously if you have cancer, I would assume it does mm-hmm. like it actually does. have it, but mm-hmm. like the elective mm-hmm. mastectomy or. It does. So okay. usually it does. Oh, um, okay. Mm-hmm. Usually it does. For the most part, insurance will actually cover the mastectomy and the reconstruction. Okay. In those patients. But not for like mommy restoration type of stuff. No. The no. eyelid lift, it does too, right? It does too. Yeah. So if it impairs vision. If it impairs mm-hmm. vision. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. that's good. My mom didn't wait that far though. She was like, just get it off. Yeah. <laughs> oh. like, I don't want to wait any yeah, longer. Like, okay, but, um, let's, let's, let's talk about like the no-nos. So do you ever have patients come in that you're just like, absolutely not. You're not doing that. Or <laughs> like, do you say no to people? I do, you know, I, I do. That's a good um, question. Like, honestly, a lot, of, a lot of people I see, I'll say 99% of people I see are pretty reasonable. Right. You know, and I think a lot of that is like people just, it's almost like people who are similar to you come in, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. So I, I, I just see a lot of like very like nice, normal people. Well, that's you good. You know, not saying I'm nice and normal, but. <laughs> yeah. but um, you are. <laughs> I think you are. We can attest. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, there are times where people come in and, you know, it's like, you know, there's there is such a thing as body dysmorphia like that. It's a very real thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's like, you know, I, like I'll have someone come in maybe and like wave their hands. You're like, look at this. And I'm like, well, if you stop waving your hand <laughs> and they're like, well, and I'm like, you know, you know, and so, you know, we just kind of chuckle. I'm like, you know, you can pinch anything. So I'll like, you know, I'll pinch the, the top of my finger like, look. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. I, a lot of it's just kind of like I'll, I just really like study people when they come in and they're talking to me and just think about and think about like how much are they pinching the tissue? Like how much does this bother them? Like, is this beyond the surface? Right. Because sometimes I do think there's such a thing as where you seek plastic surgery to correct something that's happening with you emotionally. Absolutely. And you have to be together emotionally to, mm-hmm. to, to have plastic surgery. Cause if you're not ready, it is going to expose all kind of things. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's a lot, there's a lack of control in the healing period, right? And we like control in general. Mm-hmm. So there's lack of control where you're healing, you're swelling. Like, when does the swelling go away? Mm-hmm. We don't know. Like, we know by, by a year it's mostly going to, it's going to be gone. But we just, the whole healing process can be very vulnerable time. Mm-hmm. So she's, am- and she's amazing because I kind of went through a little bit of that mm-hmm. after it was all over. It wasn't, it was less than a year. And I went back to her and I was like, okay, doc. Where you took it out here, I was like, "Uh uh-oh, I see something. Mm -hmm. And my biggest thing is I don't want people to know. I mean, obviously, I tell people. Mm -hmm. But I don't want, if I'm in a bikini, I don't want them to go, Yeah, she did that. And Mm -hmm. why did she do that? I'm thinking negative, Mm -hmm. you know? And she was like, Jamie, you're fine. That's a muscle. Yeah, We can't do anything about that. Mm -hmm. It's a muscle. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to, and I'm like, no, if you think it's normal, then I'm fine. (laughs) But you do. Your mind does. You get in your head on it. You get in your head. You start staring at things. You know, it's just, it happens, like it just happens. And I needed her to say, Jamie, it's fine. And I honestly have never thought about it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I haven't. You Mm -hmm. just fixated on like a specific thing. I did. Mm -hmm. Well, I think social media is oh, just ruining, yes. especially like the generation below us. Oh, it's like, yeah. good Lord, I can't imagine what these girls expect to look like. And everything's a filter and mm-hmm. it just is like scary. I have patients who come in all the time that wish pictures and I'm like, and literally, and I'm very honest and I'm like, there's no way. <laughs> you ain't never going to look like that girl. <laughs> it's just not happening. Yeah. <laughs> not going to happen. Like, I'm like, I am very, I am just so grateful for my <laughs> gift. And like, I, I love the surgeries I can do with transformations, but this is not happening. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's good awesome. that you can be honest and just yeah, tell them. I'm very like, honest. A big part of it is just setting expectations, right? Like letting you know what to expect. Like what can I achieve for your body type? And patients even come in with wish pictures being my own patients that I posted on social media. And like, what about that? And I'm like, actually, like her bone frame is completely different. Like her waist is just completely different than yours. So like uh-huh. two people can have the same surgery and have compl- and have different results. Like one waist might be super snatch is the term that the young people use. Snatch? Snatch. Snatch. <laughs> snatch. <laughs> snatch. Okay. Uh-huh. Never heard that <laughs> before. <laughs> people coming and asking you for snatch yes, waist all the time. <laughs> wow. And I'm like, your waist will not be as snatched as hers. <laughs> Because of your bone structure, but you will be as snatched as I can humanly get you. Yeah, you know? you're like I'm not taking out ribs <laughs> here. I say that all the time. I'm like I'm not taking out ribs. Like I'm just not going that far. Oh, you know? that's crazy. Because my goal is I want women to still look like themselves. Right, you right. Know? Just to look like a restored version of themselves is my goal. Yeah. You know what I love about your Instagram is how you answer questions that people mm-hmm. have. Like one of the questions that you did recently was, okay, if you do liposuction. 
where does the fat go? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like, and I've always wondered that even though I've had that done with my procedure, mm-hmm. I'm like, but where does it go when I gain weight? Mm-hmm. So it was interesting. So yeah. what is, what, where does it go? So it's so funny because people <laughs> come in there like, does it travel? I'm like, <laughs> where is it going to travel to? <laughs> I swear I didn't think that. I was like, oh, it's going to my thighs now. <laughs> Someone's like, I think one of my hands. I'm like, okay. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the important concept there to understand is like we are born with a certain amount of fat cells. Like the fat cells will get bigger or they'll get smaller, but you don't just spontaneously increase fat cells. So, you know, if you do liposuction, like let's say on your abdomen, well, you that is a way to decrease fat cells, like because we're taking out fat cells. So you have less fat cells there. So if you gain weight, you're less likely to gain it where you've had lipo, but you gain it other places. Mm-hmm. Now, if you gain a bunch of weight, you'll gain it everywhere, but less where you have lipo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's all the questions that people randomly ask that I just like, I, I have a little note section in my phone where I just uh-huh. put these little questions and I'm like, oh, what can I answer today? You know? Well, so I want to ask, like, people who don't have access to you, right? Because you're in Nashville, but right, yes. not everyone mm-hmm. can get here. Mm-hmm. Like, what are what's kind of the checklist on, like, they're looking for a plastic surgeon. Right. Like, board certified. Right. Like, that type of mm-hmm. stuff. What would be your, like, top three things? Right. So, the number one thing is, like, it's not so, unfortunately, like, consumerism, it, you know, the, has they have taught, they've learned how to trick people, which is it's just kind of sad. So, mm-hmm. it's not just about board certification. You want to make sure it's in plastic surgery. Okay. Because these days you can like take a weekend course in liposuction, <gasps> which is which is terrifying. Oh my gosh! Mm-hmm. So you can have a dentist, you know. Oh lord! A, wow. An OB guy like doing mm. lipo, um, and you don't know it's a consumer because you see board certified and and yes. you know and you're like, oh, they're board certified, they do lipo. But it's like in dentistry, and then like board certified, so you're certified in something else. Wow! Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. that is scary. Or there, there's that's another scary. board. There's another board that's not technically plastic surgery that has kind of done started this thing and it's weekend courses it's or it's like you know a a few months even a year but it's just not enough you know Mm -hmm. i mean mean, we're spending like six to eight years learning about this all the time um and there are certain surgeries like liposuction that seems like oh it's just lipo but it's not just lipo like lipo can be very dangerous yeah if you don't know what you're doing um so can you look that up somehow their certification Mm -hmm. you can so there's several places you can go to just like the board there's like a um the American Board of Medical Specialties. Um, you can go there. Truly, like, because it's so much work to get board certified in plastic surgery, like, you know, it's always like high and bold and on any plastic surgeon's website. Okay. You're not gonna hide it. Yeah. Like right. if you're board certified in plastic surgeon, you're gonna say like board certified plastic surgeon. It's gonna be like there obviously on their bio page. Okay. So you wanna go to their the website and then look at the credentials and just make sure it says board certified in plastic surgery. Okay. So that's prob- that, that's probably the most important thing. Okay. Reviews are important. Um, I would definitely, you want to look at all the reviews. Um, and so including the negative ones and just see what they're saying. So, you know, the majority at some point, like somebody's going to be, that's the hard Unhappy. thing, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, for whatever reason, but you can, you can usually read between the lines and I'll give it a brief example. So taking call, I see people sometimes in the emergency room with horrible complications from plastic surgery elsewhere. Um, and I always kind of do a deep dive and look it up because I'm like, let me ex- see what they're experiencing so I can educate people on what to avoid. Um, and so every time I look it up and go to the website, first of all, it's not it's usually not plastic surgery board. It's usually something else. But also there are a lot of negative reviews that say things that are like, oh, my gosh, these are so many red flags. Yeah. Reviews are important, of course, like be careful because sometimes you can have a lot of good reviews and m- maybe you pay to get the negative ones taken down you know so yeah. that's, that's, a, that's a slippery slope but it's still an important checkpoint yeah the reviews also look at and see what they're saying like are they really long are people saying a lot like you know like if it's just like great experience but yeah. it's like of paragraphs well who's gonna spend paragraphs you know so yeah. I think look at the nature of the reviews totally that's really good mm-hmm. advice that's the one thing about reviews i'm always afraid of mm-hmm. but, i mean mm-hmm. you can get anybody to do it mm-hmm. that's true it's, mm-hmm. yeah it's 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 scary out there which which is kind of a big reason of a lot of what i do what i do um because it's scary out there yeah and you just don't know what you don't know mm-hmm. that's why i mean i found you through another friend mm-hmm. and since then you have done multiple friends, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. so it's like word of mouth is great. Personal word of mouth. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. And the one thing that's why Lisa's so good, too, because so Dr. Amaka has a lot of patients that come from out of town who stay at hotels here. Mm-hmm. And Lisa will come and mm-hmm. take care of them and make sure they're that's okay. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. And she's just like Dr. Amaka. Oh, <laughs> so, so friendly. <laughs> so <laughs> friendly and awesome. Okay, so reviews and then anything with like price or promises or because I feel like you can kind of get sold. Right. So like in, Instagram is a great reference. But okay. Be careful because, you know, like you usually put your best stuff on Instagram, right? right. Like you don't put like, oh, this page. True. I mean, sometimes I'll, I mean, I'll be like, this page has a complication. Would you think that? I mean, because I'm just trying to be open and honest, right? But like for the most part, like people put their best stuff out there right. on Instagram. So that's, you can have someone who's not a plastic surgeon putting stuff on Instagram and it's like, oh, that looks great. I'm going to go. And a lot of people are doing that mm-hmm. because there's a lot of kind of the other world of non-plastic surgeons who do cosmetic surgery on Instagram and that's kind of how they're building up everything. So Instagram is an okay place, but not like that should not be your only, you Mm -hmm. know, obviously that should be your only thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like look at the credentials, look at the trainings, look at the training and make sure there was a residency in plastic surgery at some point. Mm -hmm. If you don't see residency plastic surgery, then just start, you know, you should start asking yourself some questions. When you set up your consultation, if you're not consulting with the surgeon, plastic surgeon, just ask yourself some questions because that's kind of strange. I always say that's okay. kind of yeah. weird. It's kinda oh, okay, weird. so you should see the doctor. You should see the doctor at your consult. I mean, and, and I'm maybe I'm biased, but I just strongly feel like if someone's like trying to invest their life in me, like yeah. I should be meeting them at their consult. Yeah. Um, because what happens is some of some sometimes you'll see like a consultant who will set your surgery plan. You won't meet the sur- you won't meet the surgeon until the day of surgery. Like the morning no. of surgery, it's like, hey, how you doing? Okay, let me go ahead and mark. And, and that's like a big red flag. Wow. I didn't even, I would assume you would have to meet the surgeon. You wow. don't. Mm-hmm. They're just like, we wow. know what you want. We told him. We know. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Get on in Tummy here. Tuck number one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I mean, Gosh. it's like, it's, it truly is like that in a lot of places. Wow. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I think a lot of people fall for that. And then, I mean, I know people travel internationally because mm-hmm. it's cheaper, which is terrifying. And oh. I always say like price is important. Like you should set a budget, but don't let that be the reason you go somewhere. Like, because, right. because that, that, that's <laughs> just never going to steer you right. If yeah. you like, if you go because of the price. Totally. Right. Yeah. Like these are my two options, but that price, I'm gonna go with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> Look at other things. Like, yeah. <laughs> if everything else checks out literally, and then it's like, okay, uh, maybe, you yes. know, but don't yes. let that be like, oh, that, you know what? That's why. <laughs> Save for two more months. <laughs> Let's <Yeah>. get it. <laughs> yeah. I can't even count the amount of like, you know, DMs I get and people like, hey, how you doing? Like, how you set up a console? I'm like, here's where you go. And literally like six months, nine months later, they're like, I had a complication. I can't get in touch with anybody. I'm like, oh my God. And because, like, in all transparency, my price is not the cheapest out there. It's just not, yeah. you know. Um, it's not the most expensive, but it's not the cheapest. Yeah. So uh, many times people price shop, and you should not price shop with your life. No. no. Way. Like, are you going to price shop for your nanny? Yeah. You're going to price shop for your heart surgeon? Yeah. Right. Just, no. you, you, why would you do it don't plastic do surgery? It. You know? Exactly. So. So I have to tell you this story. I don't think I've ever told you. And, uh. Dr. Amaka said a little while ago that they still talk about this to this day. Oh, God. <laughs> Did you do something embarrassing? <laughs> well, <laughs> it wasn't that it was embarrassing. <laughs> it was so I went in for my consultation and I met with her lovely nurse, not Lisa, another one that works in an office. And so I'm just talking to her. Now I'm getting ready to have surgery the following week. And uh, <laughs> she's. I was like, okay, well, what do you wear? Because you come into her actual, <laughs> <laughs> into your actual <laughs> office. And she was like, just something comfortable, <laughs> something loose. And I went, oh, I'm like, so maybe like a robe? <laughs> and she's like, sure, you come through the back door. Well, I didn't know she was joking. <gasps> <gasps> no. <laughs> oh, no. So. I, I I came in slippers. <laughs> I came in my barefoot dreams fuzzy robe. Oh, <laughs> that's a good robe though to go in. And so <laughs> I I went in for my appointment. I knocked on the door in the back, and one of the nurses <laughs> opened. Up. I I was not supposed to do that. <laughs> I was supposed to go through the front. <laughs> So she be, she's like, yes. I'm like, I'm here for my appointment. <laughs> so she's like, oh my gosh. Okay. So I'm like, I'm still not realizing that this <laughs> is you did normal. So <laughs> they were all like, uh. So then they hurry up and get me into a room. And I'm just sitting there. My mom had already left. We were probably about 30 minutes early. So they didn't have a room even ready for me. So they had to kick somebody else out of their room and so I get in Dr. Amaka comes in she goes Jamie what's under there <laughs> I went <laughs> I said, what's under that robe I said nothing <laughs> nothing <laughs> <laughs> she goes you came from home now granted it was only 10 minute drive <laughs> 
you came from home with nothing under your robe? I'm like, yeah, you're going to have to take it off anyway. <laughs> oh, my It was so funny. Gosh. Now when people ask, like, what should, I'm like, you know what? Just wear slippers and a robe. Because it was the <laughs> easiest recovery because we just slipped on a robe. Slipped on a robe. Yeah. It that would so be awesome. easy. They remember me there. <laughs> yeah. I was, like, so, I was like, so you undressed. You basically undressed to come in. To today. come here. Good. I don't I probably wouldn't have thought anything of it either like well I'm gonna get in a gown anyway Mm -hmm. or whatever you're in I thought I'm going comfortable (laughs) I went out and got some new Ugg slippers and all oh my (laughs) hilarious does it annoy you if people basically have random consultations (laughs) with you like at dinner or they're your friend but maybe not that close of a friend you know your close Mm -hmm. friend you probably don't care but you know like an acquaintance does that happen to you often and how does that go you know, with like with friends, I don't I don't mind that much. With family, it happens some, and so my mom's friends would be like, "Oh, we're coming, and what's our <laughs> discount?" I'm like, "Oh God, like, yeah, oh Lord, so bad. Bad. family bad. discount." No, the family discount, which <laughs> you know, if you know, if you know, like it, it'd be like zero dollars. Yeah, you know, is the discount for them. But you know, not it. It doesn't happen like as often as you think, and like uh, occasion people will recognize me out and usually they'll just come say hi but they won't be like what do you think about this that's good it'll more be like hey like you know nice to meet you but it won't be like hey what do you think about my my lips yeah. and my nose do i know? need okay. to come in mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you probably know how to shut it down too i can I see do, you being yeah. like mm-hmm. the person that's kind of like all right yeah. no more questions you know, and usually you can read the room like okay like we're at dinner yeah <laughs> absolutely <laughs> It happens probably more like on social media, like all the time. Oh, like, I mm-hmm. bet. Someone will have surgery elsewhere and they're like, what do you think about my results? And I'm like, whoa, I'm not, I, we are not doing yeah. medicine in the DMs. Do no. you, you know, get like all the breaths time. everywhere in your DMs? Yeah. And I'm oh. like, I'm not doing this. So <laughs> there was a time like early on, I was like, sure. And I'm like, no, this is, this is not like medical legal. I can give yeah. you medical advice in the DMs, you know? Oh, that's so hilarious. Wait, <laughs> I, I have a question and this may be embarrassing and I may decide that we don't say anything like this, but Men, do you do any plastic surgery for that area? No, I do not. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it's just... like, you know, like the other day someone was like, do you do, do, do hemorrhoids? I was like, no, I don't. No. You know, I'm, just, I'm sticking to. You You're know. like, I'm very talented. And I get to pick <laughs> oh, no. what I want to do. <laughs> and that is not part of it. There was a point in training where we do things for like, you know, like, if you had like a buried penis, yeah, you know, you do things to release it. Wait, a what? Buried <laughs> penis? A what? <laughs> How do you bury a penis? Well, it's not. You know, it's just that the skin, <laughs> the skin becomes so heavily encapsulated over the over the glands, like the head <gasps> of the penis. So you do things to release that skin. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, but I don't do that now. Whoa. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. You're like, I that got is... enough of that in my training. <laughs> <laughs> Done. You know, the cool thing is you come out and you're like, okay, what do I actually want to do? Yeah. Yeah. In training, you just do it. You do everything. Like, you get called at 2 a.m. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. You yeah. know, but in, when you're finished, you can be a little bit more selective. Can I ask you, you, I don't know if HIPAA or whatever, but um, what is the worst you've had to do? Like, what is the worst case scenario? Surgery. Like, in, in general, um, I'll give you a scenario. So I was I was pregnant with my son and I was about eight months pregnant. And I got so we in training, we got called for a lot of like infections and things. So uh-huh. it, was a, it was a really bad hand infection and they tend to smell really bad. Oh, so it had quite the odor. Pregnant. Oh. Pregnant. Oh, you already know where this is going. Oh. <laughs> Look at your face. So, so literally I go in and I'm like, OK, you know, I numb everything up. So numb it up so that they can't feel, obviously. So then I make my little and, and this was we did all this stuff awake, like in the emergency room and at like two, three a.m. all the time. And so. I made a little hole to drain infection and it just comes out and it's smelling. So literally I like every 10 minutes I'd run out, vomit oh in God. the hallway, go back, you know, clean Mm-mm. up a little bit, go back, vomit. And so that just happened. And the nurse is just like, what? And I'm like, I don't know There's what else There's nothing else, to else do. I can do. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is, you know? Oh my God. That was very memorable. Oh, mm-hmm. I can about imagine. Yeah. Oh my. Mm-hmm. That makes me want to vomit. I had the worst <laughs> nausea when I was pregnant. I cannot imagine. I did too. And I was nauseous like all the time. Me too. You know? Oh my gosh. And so... Yeah. Oh wow! <laughs> I was just in and out. Like I'm like, okay, be right back. Vomit. Be right. And you know, so I just had them put the trash can right outside of the room, yeah. so I could just 
you know, not have to go all the way to the bathroom. Oh, my gosh. Well, we're almost out of time, but I do want to ask a little bit about work-life balance just sure. because we, we touched on, oh, like, yeah. the female plastic surgeon stuff, but I can imagine, like, there are different expectations for a female over, like, a male plastic mm-hmm. surgeon. I don't think he's getting called for a sick kid at school or mm-hmm. whatever happens. Mm-hmm. Can you talk us talk to us about that a little bit? Sure, yeah. Um, so, you know, I had, so I had my kids in residency and fellowship. The key has really been I had my my husband's so supportive and so great like it would be impossible without him. Um mm-hmm. and so I, when I think about balance I think it's I think it's less about like just waiting for balance to happen. You have to just create balance. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of separate it into three areas. I think about self-care, family, work. Um self-care is actually at the top. Um and I didn't realize that at first and so I kind of fell off on on the self-care mm-hmm. wagon and because I what I found is that you can't pour into other people if you're empty. You know, yeah. um, you can't be a great mom, a great surgeon. Sure, you can you can function right because the surgeons we learn like no matter what the circumstances, you can just operate almost like a, almost like in a machine like fashion, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but you want don't want to be a machine. You want to empathize with people. You want to kind of help them along their journey. And so, and so I, I prioritize self care. Um, and so for me, what that looks like is I wake up really early in the morning, and that's kind of my me time. So I'll do like meditation. I'll act, that's when I exercise and all that. What time is that? I'm oh, scared. Oh, okay. Not I bad. was I was scared. <laughs> <laughs> That's early. That's, That's early. really early. <laughs> okay. But it's just it's just like my quiet time, yeah. and it has been life. It's been amazing. You know, for as far as family life, like it's and th- this other thing too. I realized talking to a lot, like a lot of women and and people about this. I think a lot of times we like, you know, it's like how do you do it all? And I'm like, I this the answer is going to shock you. I do not do it all. Like right. you can't do it all, right? So. When I'm at work in the operating room and I'm in a surgery runs late, like I'm not at home. And I'm not picking up my kids. Right. So you have to accept that you can't do it all. There's going to be some things yeah. you're going to miss. And but it's all about at the end of the day, it's all about just realizing that some weeks work life balance is going to be better than others. Sometimes you, your work life balance is going to be like, gosh, that was a rough week. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I try to get home for dinner every night. Sometimes I don't, you know, but it's all about having that goal and, you know, doing the best you can until you can do better and then when you know better you do better Mm -hmm. so that's kind of how that how that balance looks for me and Mm. and i'm in certain things like one of my big hobbies is cooking so i do a lot of cooking at home you know and for my families but that's a hobby and that's sort of my release time even though it may look like she's working she just she got (laughs) home and she's cooking yeah it's six o'clock i'm like no this is enjoyable yeah Yeah. 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 that's john he loves to cook that's his uh-huh really? that's my release. Hobby. yeah 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 mm-hmm. so just incorporating hobbies into doing things with them yeah and, and i've been like so i've been better about like my phone like sometimes i'm attached to my phone because i'm like on social media i'm replying to this or i'm posting this and I, when i get home i try and just take my eye watch put my phone upstairs and really try and unplug you. and be there with family yeah because and and that's kind of one thing i've started doing when i realized like gosh like it's nine o'clock and I'm sleeping and I didn't really spend time with them because yeah. I've just been so busy doing this and doing that and doing this and doing that, right. you know? So yeah. just being very intentional is a big thing. That's great advice. I've enjoyed the past couple of years watching you with your self care. Mm-hmm. Cause you really have you between your collagen mm-hmm. and just the way you exercise mm-hmm. and the way you cook. I mean like, I've I've noticed and, and it's amazing mm-hmm. to watch well, and thanks. it's, yeah. it's an inspiration mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm always like, you know, like if anybody can do it, like it's it's not about like, oh, I have to do this or I have to get to do this. Like you get to do this and, yeah. you know, like you have to make time to do it. Otherwise, it's never going to ha- You have to make time. No, none of us have right. time. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like how much extra time do you have? None. You know, so, but <laughs> mm-hmm. you have to make time. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And it's awesome, too, because your kids see it. I mean, mm-hmm. your little girl does it with you sometimes. She does. She does. And it's so cute. She's so yeah. little. Yeah. And um, so it's it's not just for you. It's it's for it your is. kids it's a demonstration yeah. you know yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You have, they have a gro- great role model oh, in I you know. for sure <laughs> well thank you speaking of we're keeping yeah. you out past dinner so <laughs> let's, let's let you have your balance <laughs> thank, thank you, you so much well, thank you all this is i this appreciate great. it yeah thank you so much for having me yes. appreciate it <laughs>